Hi! Oh my god, it's been forever. But we're back. We would never leave you for longer than we would have to. <laughs> yes, we all have lives, but the shady ladies have returned in full force. To dole out some much needed shade. With the help of Luanda. Um, and shade judge judgments read upon the All Stars season two of RuPaul's Drag Race. We are your lovely hosts, Samir Roy and Mark Picard, contributing editors at Gambit Magazine. Now that we've gotten the formalities out of the way, ah, uh, there's so much to cover. We missed three we, episodes. Well, we missed two while we were gone, and, and now then we're one com- happened while we were getting back into the <laughs> swing of things. And we'll be talking about those, but first we need to. Bring back up the news desk from our preview <laughs> episodes. And we'll have to wish a hearty congratulations to RuPaul on her Emmy win. Oh my goodness, finally. Historic. I have to say it was long overdue. For hosting. I know. Because usually I, it just gets nominations for like makeup. I know. And I'm like, but, but, I mean, but the RuPaul, queens do their own makeup. <laughs> RuPaul himself deserves an Emmy. He is an underrated host. I find him to be very charming and funny and has done... A lot with RuPaul's Drag Race. And even on uh, Gay for Play, he's just a really good host in general. I, don't, I feel like if him and Tina Fey together could host the Emmys or Golden Globes, that would be ideal. Oh my gosh. But I have to say, it was long overdue. I know that RuPaul doesn't care for Emmys. He would rather have an enema. But... But he likes getting awards. I think it's fabulous that he was recognized for his work. So we wish you, from the Shady Ladies and LaWanda, our trusty Shade Wand... A congrats. Congratulations. Congratulations, RuPaul. You're a winner. Oh, you know, some of the stuff that went down on that second episode, the Snatch Game episode, kind of, uh, he left a sour taste in our mouths. Well, I want to just bring this up before I forget because I've been wanting to talk to you about this all week, (laughs) but there has been some major shade from Fifi O'Hara to the point where she... I know that she was one of the queens that was like, I'm here to redeem myself. They she all talked said a lot. That. Well, I feel like her and Roxy were the two that really had something to prove. But Roxy wasn't so loud and proud about her redemption story arc as Fifi was. But in the last week, Fifi's gotten herself into a bit of trouble on Twitter and just her general attitude between the show and I guess maybe she feels the need to answer people on Twitter, which is never the answer. No. Just don't go on. Don't read anything. I don't know. You will engage. Do not engage. Just don't. There's no point. So what did she but, do? So, well, it all started with Fifi hosting an All-Stars episode at some bar somewhere and somebody recorded her saying, oh yeah, during the uh, Future of Drag runway challenge, Jeremy Scott didn't tell Alyssa that her outfit was fashion. He hated it, and he dragged, uh, he dragged, whatchamacallit, he dragged Detox and, like, some other, like, just said, like, a bunch of things that weren't true to the point that it got back to Logo, and Logo released the unedited footage of the judges' critiques where it clearly shows that Jeremy Scott said Uh, that is fashion. So everybody went in on Fifi, and so she said, I believe it was over the weekend, I read it on Oh No, They Didn't, Mm, and over the weekend, Fifi tweeted something to the effect of, you know, I'm not going on the reunion show of All Stars because I feel really betrayed by the host and the producers of this show that they don't have my best interests at heart. First of all, there are lots of things wrong with that. I mean, chief among them being, you do not bite the hand that feeds you. Like, Rue did a lot. And Rue didn't even, didn't at mention her, but responded with, okay then, and then unfollowed her. <laughs> and then Fifi came back and was like, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Rue completely unfollowed me and she's abandoned me and blah, blah, blah. It's like, well... You totally shat all over her. You shouldn't expect her to be like, oh, let me hug you. Like, no. This right. is not only... This is the second time. And if you're surprised about producers' machinations to manipulate you into things, one, get some sort of subscription to TV and watch Unreal and educate yourself a little bit. Yeah. Two, you've already been through this. How do you fucking not know? You can exactly. also say no. It's it's annoying that you play victim about something that you are privy to, that you have experience doing, and you can just say no and be a dignified person and just have less of a story arc. Instead, you said yes, you decided to be the villain, and now you want to cry wolf about how everybody, like, manipulated you into it. I Everybody, Ginger saw, clocked you immediately trying to yeah. manipulate people and talk in their ear. You did it at Snatch Game. Like, it's not the editing. At there's a also cer- Tatiana. Tatiana. Well, yeah, Tatiana but there's right also a certain point where the editing, it's not the editing's fault. No. Now, all they're doing is putting together the story from the footage there. It's not like 
they edited you being an asshole. You're yeah. just an asshole. And I'm sorry you had to find out this way. But, I mean, I had to unfollow her from Instagram because she was just getting too iry about, oh, it's like everybody else's fault. It's like, I can't do this. I can't. I cannot. I'm sorry. You were way more talented when so. you were doing the 365 days of drag and you didn't really have an opinion on anything one way or another. So Now it's a problem. And she's proven herself to be a pretty shady bitch in an unfun way. Like, she's proven herself to be exactly the way she was represented the previous time she was on Drag Race. It's like, oh, so you are this person. This is who Fifi kind of already is. As much as she wants to say that she wants to change and this and that. I mean, I don't know her personally, so, you know, maybe she's different on tour. Um, But uh, I just... The way it's coming across, it's like she's giving them the same material to work with, basically. Pretty much. And there's no one to blame for giving them the same material except for the person providing it. Yeah. I mean, maybe this show just brings out the worst in you and you shouldn't do it. That's the thing. Sometimes it just doesn't bring out a good side in people. But I don't think that it's fair to blame RuPaul and the makers of the show that put it together. For your behavior in that sense. Yes. On the flip side, the door drama from Adore's exit was... I, it was like that it was, was like a, a no com- win. That was a no win situation. It was a complete like one eighty from like the Phoebe situation where you're like you can't blame RuPaul for anything. And here it was like kind of like disturbing to hear that conversation where RuPaul was almost trying to shame Adore into staying, and was like, "What do you think your fans are going to think of this?" And it's like they're not your fans, so what do you care? Like I don't I don't know. All I know is that if I was going to pay to see Adore perform before, I'm still going to do it now. It's like she's, she's never just not shown up to a performance, you know, like that's never happened. So at least it's not happened no, in time that she's been in town here. Um, I genuinely would not equate her showing or her her small showing on All Stars with her persona outside of the show. Because I've never heard anything to the contrary that she's nothing but sweet and hilarious and great to work with and she's really talented, blah, blah, blah. And that, and you didn't even hear that kind of talk. There was no negative talk around her leaving. I honest to God think it was just a really no win. She realized that she was like, I feel like I can't go out on the runway and get fair critiques because now that I've cried, everyone's going to be like, oh no. Everyone yeah. gonna, and she doesn't want that either because that doesn't make a competition. And then she doesn't also, want the pity vote, but she also doesn't want to stay and be criticized in this for way. For being her. That's right. the thing. It was, they were like, our aesthetic. I don't like it. I want you to do something different. And she's like, well, no, I've clearly already made my career well, based I on who I am. That- I don't need you to tell me that who I am is not good enough for this show when you're the ones who asked me to be here. You asked me here knowing exactly what I was going to provide. And then you're upset that I provide that. I think that Adore actually put it pretty succinctly when she said, I didn't, to Michelle, she's like, I didn't realize she was going to be work Michelle. So I think that maybe she just means that she is. This is the persona that she's going to put on for this season, and well, she didn't it was realize also, it was going to be like that. I think it was also going from like working with someone to being judged by them. And yeah. it's like this doesn't make any sense to me. And then, like you know, the whole point of the competition, as they've been saying all along, this is what's what infuriated me about the episode was uh, <clears throat> that RuPaul. I mean, I don't expect RuPaul to know exactly what to say in every situation. Usually, RuPaul does. Very, it's very eerie. But like here, it was just like. He's like, I think you're being sabotaged by your inner saboteur. It's like, well, no. That's that's, that's making an art exactly. or trying to make her cry. But I do think that inner saboteur thing, because you know RuPaul likes to play armchair psychiatrist. I know. So I feel like but that was a little used bit that of that. that line before. I've I know, heard it that's, before. That's so I'm why like, I feel but like But when he used it before, it was accurate. It's standard procedure. And he was procedure. saying that you conquered your inner saboteur and was talking about, I think, Trinity. Trinity's, Trinity's problem was, was like, like that, that little piece inside, inside that was like, like um, I, I can't, can't let, let myself go all out on these other things. things. I can only do it here. And it was like sort of a self-esteem issue almost in a way. And you saw Trinity like totally come out of that. But I don't think that was the case here. So I don't think the comment was really appropriate. And then to be like, what do you want me to say? Whatever it is, I'll say it. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make anybody feel better. It's like you clearly don't know how to fix the situation. Well, but that's, I think that that's exactly what you meant by that comment. It's, it's like, like there's, there's like, like you know, you know why, why even make the comment? comment? I'm like, like I would have avoided it completely because it just shows like I don't know what to do. To you, I, I, I just, I just want you to say it didn't feel, it didn't feel, it didn't feel too contrived, contrived and, and I genuinely, I just looked at the intent. intent. It didn't seem malicious or I don't know about malicious, but I don't think it was like a pure like. Well, of course not. There was also at work, and this is her job. Like, I don't want my show to look bad because you're leaving because we did something that was really cruel to you. Because Kathy even said it in her review of the episode. She even said, 
like, it, it was, was really bullying. bullying. Like, the, just, just watching, watching it, it was like watching somebody be bullied by people. It was not, the, the, the criticisms were not fair. They were not, you know, it was just like, they were on a very personal level. During the critiques. Yeah, in the first episode. I mean, it was really, it really came out of nowhere. And apparently, on Periscope, a door went up and talked about it, and the fact that, like, when she was given the, which she was asked to be on, I think she was just getting over her father dying, and she was in a really weird, like, emotional space, and she was like, sure, I guess I'll do it, and then it was like, okay, it's time to be here, and then she's like, oh, okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on the show now, and I'm gonna prepare for it, and it was like a really weird emotional space, so it was really a situation where it was like, it was better for her emotionally to leave the show, she was like, no, I wasn't gonna, first of all, like you said, like, what she said to Michelle, um, which, which was, was that, that like, like now it's like you're not gonna, gonna I'm not gonna, gonna the, the critiques are not gonna, gonna be weird because you're gonna be afraid of hurting my feelings and that's not really how this should work but I'm also not in a position to, to say that I need to listen to you judge who I am and what I do for a living and what I do for a career like I'm not gonna change who I am and then Michelle's weird apology it was a strange it, I wouldn't say it was a take off for sunglasses it was a weird time. non it, it was a non apology and then says I know maybe I am trying to get you to do something off brand or something and I'm like and then when RuPaul decides to question all the queens like I want to make sure you're all here you understand why I brought you here and like you know like that that whole little conversation he had and saying how like you know I, I wanted to create a show that furthered people's careers and enabled them to uh solidify their brand and their whatever and I'm like so wait a minute you're criticizing someone for leaving the show because you want them to be someone they're not and then you say that your show exists to let people be more who they are than ever and make a career off of it it's like well Adora's already done that like she already has a career that she built off of her experience on Drag Race so when like people like Alaska is just disappointed in what's happening in her because she's just wasting this amazing opportunity I'm like well she sells out clubs for her shows, Alaska. You, your events end up on Gold Star, so this probably means a little bit more for your career than it does for yours because she doesn't need All Stars to further it. I don't think she really needed it, and then she just didn't realize that it was going to, you know, I guess. I think it's kind of her fault that she didn't realize what it was going to be like because you've been on the show before. You've worked with Michelle or Bianca and someone else, I forgot who else has been on tour with them. As, As like, like said, like, like no, Michelle's, Michelle's like really harsh and like mean about Dora. Look, all the I time. I think it was detox that said that, that when they were yeah. on tour together, it was like Michelle would just ride her for no reason. All the time. And so it's like, well, you have to know that that was what was going to happen when you came here. But I think maybe she thought because she knows Michelle's also a good person. Well, if you saw how excited Dora was when she showed up, I think she just wanted to go hang out with her friends. To be totally honest. I didn't realize, realize it was going to be so, well, we're going to judge you immediately. I just felt like they picked her, like, oh, she's the one that we can start some sort of weird drama with. And then she was like, no, I'm not playing the game. Instead, it totally backfired. And then in the end, it just, I felt like it was just a sad and shitty situation. It was really sad. But I do respect Adora for being like, oh, like, just kidding, no thanks. Whereas, like, Fifi continues to be on the show and be like, everyone's so mean. I know, I'm like, but you are making that happen for yourself. Yes, so... Anyway, anyway, that concludes the news, news corner. <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should have a sound effect with that. I know. This is like a telegraph machine or whatever that nobody uses. Make a note. 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 Take it. Take it. Is that a old tiny typewriter? Yes. So, so great California type in. We are going to briefly talk about the two episodes that we missed. Uh, oh, that, that was, was actually an accident. That's because I'm holding still. Oh my god, still. you're with JJ Cachet. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um, I'm just going to put that there. Um, no, I'm going to the wand. And <laughs> so we're going to briefly talk about Snatch Game and the results. I also have to say, I mean, the last couple songs for Lips and Creator Legacy have been Gold. perfection. So good. Um, but we're talking about. Snatch game, talk about her story, her story extravaganza. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll launch into this most recent week's episode. Yes, yes, yes. With a shocking twist. I know, finally. Well, I know. Sort of. Kind of. Kind of. We'll, get, we'll get there. Yeah. But season Part two, one of the final episode two, All-Star Snatch Game. There were yes. some really good hits. Yes. And some really bad misses. Oh, Lord, I'm going to play her shitty games, games again. Because she went like, oh, so she, I think. But I have to say, real quick about Snatch Game, it, it just like, was not as strong. Remember, these, like, everybody was on point, and there'd be like yeah. one person that was just 
amazing. Amazing in one hilarious bomb that was. Oh yeah. It's like four like uncomfortable bombs now. It's been. I feel like it's been a couple seasons where Snatch Game is just not. Yeah. And what is up with other people playing other or people playing other drag queens? Why is why well, is there's only one this time? I know, but why? It just rem- it reminded me how annoying that is. Yeah, at least nobody played a man this time. I actually thought this snatch game was better than like the last two that we've seen. It is, but it's still not all the way back. No, it's not all the way back, but it's definitely a market improvement, possibly mostly because of uh, Katya's Bjork. And Alaska's Mae West was great. I oh my oh my issue with the Mae West was that she should have put in so much padding to look like Mae West. Having lost his skinny rail body try to be Mae West was just an offense to me. I'm like, no, you don't just focus on the voice and bring a hat and a wig. You so say the face was kind of there for well, me. It just looked like Alaska in makeup. Her, her makeup later on playing another star in the most recent episode. We'll get to that because that was on point. Really. That was really good. But I was like, it's just, I think Mae West is actually really easy to do because you just have to sort of make the voice and just make a bunch of sexual double entendres out of everything you say. Uh, I thought she was like, why don't you go and fuck me in the ass ass sometimes? That was not a double entendre at all. No, that was 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 the one genuinely good joke because I was like, okay, now that's Alaska and Mae West combined As soon as she said it, I was like, she just won. Oh yeah, it was obvious like I think that she was gonna win. Even though I kinda of thought Katya probably should have won, but some people Her work was excellent though. It was even so though I've heard good. other people were like, I didn't like it. I was like, I think Fuck it was you. I Bjork co signed it, so it's good. Yeah, for Bjork me. liked it. I, I trust Bjork over some random. Bjork was only disappointed line. that it wasn't current era Bjork and it was past era Bjork. Yeah. I just want to leave her hair it looked like a strami. And I just like, like oh like, like the, the weird little bird noise that she make. Oh, she was so, it was so funny. It was so funny. It was spot on. It was a risk, but it paid off. I thought, I was like, thank God, this is like, this is Katya. Because they also think it landed if you don't know who Bjork is. You know what I mean? Even if you don't, you just like, just the character. Yeah. And it's hilarious. And I love what uh, Carson said. He's like, I always imagined Bjork to be like an Icelandic toddler on LSD, and you captured that for me. (laughs) (laughs) And you gave me that. I'm like, that's exactly right. That you sounded Um, just like Carson. So yeah, the Mae West and the the Bjork were like really the best ones. Although, Alyssa Edwards was not, well, sort of character of Joan Crawford and Mommy Dearest. I did not like it. I I thought the face, I thought the whole look was on point. I thought everything was so wrong that it was hilarious. But all she did was just shout one-liners out of context. And, like, she didn't do the Joan voice. That was the biggest annoyance for me. She just sounded sounded like like Alyssa. She did, but I found it so entertaining. that that She she is entertaining. That's the problem is that she's always so funny. She makes up for a lot of the things that she lacks, but the not, not having the voice bug the fuck out of me. I did not, I did not appreciate that. I did not think just, just sitting there with like surprised. her facial expressions. I thought her facial expressions were funnier than whatever she said. I like how she used the clothes. This ain't my first time. At the what? The snatch game. Barbara, please. <laughs> oh, and because yeah. the, the things that you that you pull out, it's the things that you pull out. Because like the moment that that quote is from, it may just sound like nothing when you say Barbara, please. But it's like no, that's when she's like about to throttle her child in her living room with the reporter in the other room. <laughs> you are deliberately trying to embarrass me in front of these reporters. But I like I I I, I just thought it was entertaining. So it was crazy, but like it was way way better. But at least, I mean, I don't totally... She didn't even do that. She wasn't even entertaining as Katie Perry. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll say that at least Alyssa commits. She goes whole hog. and oh, whatever she... she's doing. Exactly. So I appreciate that. I just... There are parts of that I was like, oh, God, fucking jeez. Like, and um, Fifi... I think Fifi did redeem herself with her Teresa Caputo. It was an easy she... character. Yep. But it was also... But she was, was well funny. executed. And it was so much more, like, consistent, like, she was actually playing the character in yes. a way than she was when she was trying to be Lady Gaga, which she was just doing who God knows what. Um, so that I was, would say there was a touch of Fifi's failed Lady Gaga and Tatiana's Ariana Grande. First of all, why the fuck would you pick Ariana Grande? She has, like, zero weird. personality. I mean, granted, she did get, I mean, the look was astonishing. It was, no, it was spot on. And she couldn't have passed for Ariana Grande, like, going anywhere in that look. I was very impressed. And the voice was right, and... Like I said, like, Michelle actually did say it right. As much as I fucking pissed at Michelle for other things, um, specifically a door. Um, she was, she was, she was spot on when she was like, you, like, the look was right, the character was right, but you just, like, didn't 
have any comeback. She didn't, like, pick up on any jokes. And she also broke character a couple times. She started laughing like Jimmy Fallon. I saw that, and I was like, wait a minute, honey. I was like, girl, come on. And like, That's nervous, like, avoiding the I know, the moment I know it was, but it was still, it was embarrassing. No, it was embarrassing. That's why it was embarrassing. It was like, you suddenly became conscious of what you were doing and you showed it instead of staying in your character and it totally broke I feel like it was whatever Marty spell you had a big character she just had a big voice a big singing voice so unless you sung everything it's like she was better off being like Mariah Carey or something I don't know I mean it would have been fine if they had at least she at least done some jokes when she was given like softballs yeah you know like, like that's, that's that's where you really make yourself in the snatch game is like how you come back and even if it's like not totally in character if you're funny you're not gonna be, you're you're gonna be looked at as better than someone else. Mm-hmm. So if she'd at least done that, then she would have been Because Rue's not looking position. for true to character. She's looking not for you to make her laugh. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. You have to make her laugh, and then the people who are true to character and make you laugh through that character are the ones who really win. Yeah. But you're gonna be judged well if, as long as you are funny. Right. Well, I feel like Tatiana should have put her her Ariana Grande impersonation inside of Roxy Andrews. Alaska trash bag dress and that threw it away so along with that look. I can't believe Phoebe fucking manipulated out of her manipulated her out of Sofia Vergara because she could have done that. It would have been way better. Yeah. Why would you have done and that? She came prepared to do it. She came with the outfit and the wig. Guys, and- never do what you haven't prepared for. Why? Yeah, not, unless you are a really good improv person, which Rossi Rossi is, is not. not. So As she's not, obviously, she's, she's not an actor. She needs to, like, be prepared. Yeah, she's not an actor, and she struggles with comedic timing, or at least in general. So she needs to rehearse it a bunch. She needs to know exactly, you know, like, she needs that. And, like, and there's no shame in that. It's just that she's not the type that can change on the fly. Yeah, exactly. And, like, and, like, not only that, like, she was, they were saying, like, oh, you're a wife And why would you person like, a queen like, that's right behind you? I don't know, and then not even know, like, her work, like, enough to, like, get the, the softball jokes. I, I could not sing. I was so Which, like, is that a wig? And then, like, if you're not wearing wigs, you're not doing drag. And then even, what was it, Ginger, we'll get to in a second, um, was, like, even I know, like, the song goes, this is not a wig, it's my hair. That's clearly what you've been set up for. And you can make a joke about how ratty the hair looks. Like, there's so many things you could have done. And, and it's, it's like, like you just don't have softball. Softball, nothing. Didn't because didn't even know the line. That was the problem to begin with. So oh it's like that. It was rock. embarrassing. And I was like, and it oh, was honey. doubly embarrassing and uncomfortable because Alaska was right fucking there. And if I were her, I'd be seething. Well, Alaska seems to always maintain a level of professionalism on the show that very few other queens have ever done on the right. show. So I think Alaska knows how to be like, no, whatever. I'm gonna put this energy into my performance. I'm not gonna like let this thing bother me now. I'll, like, maybe cry well, and write like, about it at night when I'm alone in the hotel room <laughs> and not show it to any of these things or the cameras. Because the well, one time, I think she's really good at, like, not showing emotion because it was when she had to show emotion in her lunch, her, you know, tic-tac lunch with Rue back in oh, season geez. five when it was like, what's your fear? My fear is dying. <laughs> I'm like, okay, one person talked about their alcoholic mom and raising a family um, as a teenager by themselves so that her mom drank. The other, the other one, one talked about being put in the hospital because he was beaten so bad, you know, in season four, like Fifi, like by her dad. You know, so you get those kind of stories, and then so when someone comes up with this like made up fear, and it's like that's what you're crying about. I'm like, oh honey, and like actually, it's a good sign because it means you have a pretty good life and you look at life pretty well. That you're not really afraid of anything. You just want to live and do all these amazing things. So there's also that to be said for Alaska, which I think makes well, her more it, stable it no than shame, anyone. But don't pretend. Don't, don't pretend. pretend. Exactly. So, so it was kind of like, meh. But, but you, you could, could just tell. I mean, Alaska had a smirk on her face the whole time. Not only because she was in the West, but also because she knew that she was being funnier than anyone oh, yeah. else. She, she was not threatened or bothered. When but I'm, I just find it to be slightly insulting. When I'm good, I'm good. When I'm bad, I get a venereal disease. Oh, <laughs> oh. Like, those are the best jokes we see a man is I thought it was hilarious. Because I'm like, every gay man knows how to do Mae West. But anyone who was born in the before 1990, obviously. But, um... Uh, so let's see. I think that's the whole bottom row. And then we had... Yeah, Ginger. Who I wasn't very impressed with her. I wanted there. it to be so much more over the top. She didn't have enough mascara on. She didn't make enough makeup jokes. She didn't make enough Jesus jokes. She just didn't push it. It just, yeah, it did not, did not go over well. She seemed to think that she did really well with her statue. I'm like, no, that was like... I did not That was bottom once. row. For me, it was yeah. not funny. I just did not laugh. The wig was not even very Tammy Faye. It was just like someone else online 
said it was just kind of like Ginger's regular wigs. Actually, a lot no, of people said that No, I really think that she just looked like Ginger. Yeah, yeah it was. I didn't see Tammy Faye in there like really at all, and it was kind no. of a disappointment. It was. I really wanted it to be not what she did. <laughs> I wanted it to be way better. Mm-hmm. It was kind of. It was a. It was a meh. But luckily, you know, I would say obviously between Alyssa, Alaska, and Katya, like the Snatch Game, at least like had some jokes that you could laugh at. Yeah. And even Fifi too got some good ones in there. It's, it's not me, it's the spirits. Yeah. I thought that she did a good job sticking to a couple different games throughout and switching it up and... and sticking to her character and like yeah. knowing how to play the character. And then also the hairspray mm-hmm. bit was pretty And the, like, the black roots in the wig and everything. And, she and got the nails. The... Yeah, yeah, like it was funny with her little radio. Oh yeah, and then fucking detox was Nancy Grace. What is up? Why two Nancy Graces in one year? And I think Detox wasn't terrible, but not full redemption. The for beginning me. was rough, and then she kind of got into it at the end. Yeah, it was. It just felt like. But I, I still don't understand what the not, appeal is of doing Nancy Grace's Grace's Nancy character. Nancy Grace is a funny character that you think would work because she's so over the top. But this is the second time that it's been. But like the, the people who chosen to do it the first time it was somebody who was not. Acid Betty. Just like I mean, I don't know how good Acid Betty is at impersonations. May not be her thing. I think it's the, the fact that the people who chose to do them are like edgier queens who aren't really good at impersonations of so why celebrities. But, then why but it seems like it's like a softball. You just get the wig, you just get the voice, and the like the irate tone, and you're there. Is what I think a lot of people think. Um, but Detox is also, I think, just not Snatch Game. Is just not her gig. No, it just isn't. Like, like she wasn't. Like, she wasn't terrible. Well, clearly she was forgettable because I almost moved on. I almost moved on. I was like, wait a minute, who was between Ariana Grande and Joan Crawford? Yeah, I was like, there There's somebody there, there and that I'm not talking about. All I'm like, that's how forgettable it was. It was. And not only that, if you notice, like a couple of times, Mae West stepped on Nancy Grace's moments. I, I noticed that a couple of different times where she's kind of over we're like, Detox was trying to do something funny, but it wasn't totally selling. And then Mae West like, saw an opening and took it like right away. And it was like, oh, 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 Mae West, oh. You're stepping on Detox is not solved. <laughs> well, she was in the bottom, wasn't she? She, was she? Because what was the, oh, yes, she was, but obviously not going to be chosen. Yeah, this was between Tatiana and Rock. Because the runway was the, the latex. Uh, oh yeah, that was cool. And I have Detox to say, Detox has, has had a really great runway yeah. this entire season so far. If she, she has to make something herself, that's going to be the challenge. So I don't know. No, if they have a challenge. they're all coming straight prepared. I think. Well, like, like you know, like if it's a challenge where you have to make an outfit. Oh well, we'll see. Because, because they, they haven't had to really do that yet, have they? But they also haven't. I mean, oh, I guess they did do it last season. They, they always, always have, have challenges where you have to make an outfit out of something. Or, we'll see. Maybe next week. But anyway. Uh, yes, that's where she's going to struggle because all the things she brings with her is amazing because her and Katya's latex looks were by far the best. Yeah. Like, easily. Um, I loved her little swimming... Oh, God. oh yeah, her Esther Williams yeah, swimming outfit. Yeah, like Buzzy Berkeley. With the, the Fleurshons. And she even had, like, the nose... The nose clip and the swim cap. And adorable. It was, like... And the, what I appreciated was that she was one of the few who wore, like, she had color. Yes. With a color in her outfit because everyone, everyone else just chose black latex. And so she chose yeah, it was like kind of ironic that um, and and Tatiana and Roxy had basically the same fucking dress on. Just one was a short version. Yeah. Um, so same like, hair, too, basically. Mm-hmm. Pretty much same goth look. Um, I think that Roxy's dress floor length rubber gown was actually really cool, just like kind of expected. It was a little bit Elvira, which I liked. And then I thought that. Tatiana's black short uh, latex dress looked a little bit like Halloween Town. Yeah, it, it looked kind of like a like a slutty vampire costume. Low rent slut vampire. Which is unfortunate because the rest of her stuff has been on point. She just had a bad week. Had a bad week, and that was all it took because the top two were Katya and Alaska, obviously. Yeah. But I would say I loved Alyssa's um, yellow latex like mini dress with the like pink kisses all over oh, it oh right that was cute <laughs> so like the people who chose color i'm like no though that's i'm like why didn't more people think i just it was interesting to see that when everyone thought her latex they all chose like sexy you know fetish black latex but and detox other people had, like it was like a burgundy and burgundy yes detox had the red and black 
and it had sort of this cool, I mean, both her and Alaska actually had, like, sort of alien looks a bit, you know, and apparently they did not copy each other, so they say, we'll see. Alaska's like, I'll show you, I drew this in my room last night, I'll show you the notebook. It's like, so you know that I didn't just see you doing it, and just do it now. Uh-huh. Which, you know. Fair. Fair. And of course, we expect the bottom two turned out to be Tatiana and... Roxy. Was it Roxy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right, because it was... Because she was awful. That was... That's not a shame. Very bad. And then, oh, no, there was a bottom three. There was there was three. And yeah, Tatiana was the other one, and we, nobody was even, like, really considering Detox to be chosen to go home. Um... Yeah, because her snatch game wasn't the worst, but her outfit was clearly some of the best, so... Yeah, so the thing she, and on average, she definitely weighed in higher than other people. Since they group. still are deciding to stick with uh, going by the judge's critique, which I don't entirely understand. make any sense, because the judge's critique is not complete until someone lives in for their life. That's how that was decided before, and you're not getting that now. I guess they so just want to like, oh, be, well, be as blameless as possible. But then... We'll, we'll get, get to that, that in the second, the next episode, of the next episode of the show that we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, but yeah, it was like cumulatively throughout the episode is sort of how like everyone has been kind. Of, most everyone has been interpreting it. But, um, also, but basically, they also say there's a consensus about like who they think is the worst because uh, Alaska wins the Lipson for your legacy, and she eliminates Tatiana, and then we see at the beginning of the next episode that that's who. Tatiana would have picked if she would have won. Yeah, because they both sort of felt the same. And Tatiana, of course, was like, even, you know, because there was a discussion about, like, how the other two people of her elimination were a part of Alaska Talks. Yeah. And, you know, Alaska's like, well, I'm not giving any friends and family discounts or anything. The Alaska Talks was a long time ago. And Tatiana's like, always keeping it real. She's like, she can say that all she wants, but at the end of the day, she's not going to send home her friends. Yeah. If she has a choice between sending home her friends or sending me home, obviously I'm going to be the one she sends home. Mm -hmm. So that's, I'm not in any, suffering any illusions that I'm going to get through this. So it kind of affected her. No, it didn't really affect her. She still performed really well in the lip sync. I think that we, that we talked about this where she looked, uh, not in the lip sync, but um, in her final runway look, I guess she was a failure too. Yeah. So it was just like, eh, it kind of was her time. It felt like an, but, but if they were going by that Justice episode rule, because the previous episode, she was one of the best. Exactly. But that's funny. So this is a perfect segue because Alyssa took into consideration that even though Katya was in the bottom two by the end of the history extravaganza, uh, she took into account that she was on um, top the week before. Yeah, and she'd been consistently good throughout the season until this one moment, and this one moment doesn't define the person. And so she was going by like the whole thing all added up together, not just the one episode. And... Well, I, I thought justifiable in her estimation of how, because it's her decision eventually. Right. Now, Janice said the same thing. She's like, at the end of the day, I'm going to go with what I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go with what someone else thinks. So it's like, I'll take into consideration what they say, but I'm going to decide for myself who I'm going, you know, since it's going to be on me. So Alyssa did the same thing. She's like, well, this is my decision. This is how I'm making the decision. And I don't think it's an unfair way to make the decision. And I agree with her. I don't think it was unfair. Um, plus, it's also like Ginger throughout the episode was like, What else do I have to do? I've given them all my glamour show realness, and I was really good at the Snatch game, and I was really good doing this. She was marked for death by the 25 second mark. You could just tell. You could, yeah, it was like, because we're not, like, again, like we said before, it's not like she's bad at anything, but it's also like, we've seen everything. Exactly. And it's like, and I'm glad that Alyssa recognized that because she's like, I think this is kind of like the end of the line with Ginger. Yeah. And, and what she Tatiana came out was in was that latex hideous. outfit she had in the previous episode was terrible too. Like this, not, this isn't even latex. Like you didn't even bring a latex outfit. And I see a lot of big people in San Francisco in latex, and you know what? They have a lot of fun with it. So I don't know why you couldn't have. And you wore that weird. Well, after she looked so material. good in her entrance. I don't know why the bathing suit from that episode that she wore for the runway was so hideous. Yeah, it was unfortunate. It was just like it didn't even fit her. I don't know what she was thinking. I have no idea. It was so ugly. I could not. But yeah, really like look. in her street. And that's your idea of future of drag? Like what? Why? Like how is that? How? I don't get it. Like I even got Katya's like future space mom, you know, like 
space soccer, soccer mom, whatever, whatever the soccer of the future is. Yeah, and her hair was great. Like, like I didn't think that there was anything futuristic about what Ginger wore whatsoever. No. I loved... Well, we, we should, should go, go back to the challenge of that episode, too, because the first three challenge was very interesting in that it was, like, a musical um, based on... Um, it was, like, a musical of, like, famous female powerful women or famous women. And throughout, throughout history. Throughout history, so, like, all the choreography and the lyrics were, like, provided for them. Right. So, like, they were told what to do for each part of the song. And it's unfortunate they didn't get to pick because... There were definitely some weaker parts of the song. And I think that they were assigned before they even got there. I think so, too. And because why would everybody not be in the costume. costume for that role is, it makes no sense because then, like, so wait, you would have had to pack, like, eight costumes depending on which one you got. Or, like, some of those costumes are no, so elaborate that I'm like, all knew. there's no way that Ginger Minj had that Catherine the Great costume and seven other costumes. Or, you know what I mean? Or six other, however many there were roles, you know, but it was like, there's no way that she brought that many. That's clearly, like, that was, like, its own suitcase, practically, was that outfit. Yeah, totally. You know, like, there's, clearly she knew she was going to be Catherine the Great, and clearly Katya knew she was going to be Princess Di, but they didn't know what the challenge was going to be exactly, probably. They just were told you have to, like, you bring a Princess Di outfit. Mm -hmm. And so, she, I, a friend's grandmother's wedding dress. I hope that was a joke. I hope that was a joke, too. Well, she said, like, it's my grandmother's wedding dress. Well, actually, it's a friend's grandmother's wedding dress. And I'm like, and you're going to cut off the train? Rest in peace, Grandma. I'm like, oh, you poor thing. And then it was like, because I guess that's why. Otherwise, he probably would have tried to plan, Katya would have tried to plan a different outfit, I think, if they'd known that they were going to be doing, like, a dancing challenge. Because Katya can dance, you know. Yeah, I know. It was sad to see her, literally, for her legacy, she kind of lost her mojo in it a little bit. You know, the week before, so I was like, okay, she's starting to go down that road again where she gets two in her head. Um, I'm hoping she doesn't. But seems I like we're going her there. role of Princess Di was, was the she, worst one. It really was, and her there's, part of the song was terrible. Her part of the song was terrible. And there, there were no funny lines. Yes, there was nothing for her to do. She got bad choreography. I was like, she was set up to fail, and then, of course, there's to be like, oh, well, you're going to make something. I'm like, they're given the choreography. And the song that they can't switch and that they had nothing to do with creating. Like, it was unfortunate because everyone else got something funny to do, at least. And it was just, like, her funny thing was, like, being slutty, but it didn't go with the character at all. And then, <coughs> pardon me, RuPaul even said, you know, it's a little unfair, you know, to judge her based on her look because all these other people were all dead. We don't know what they yeah, look like. Yeah, they're all subject to interpretation. But this person, we have to, like, actually follow what they look like. You know, so you have to look like a real person, which is a lot different. But yeah, yeah, I she thought, was, I thought she, a, I she got the short end of the stick. I thought, I thought that was really messed up to put her in that position um, to begin with. Because I'm like, really, like you, you clearly like this was like the last thing that they wrote. Like, okay, we gotta finish this one part. We forgot to do it. And it's the the gist of that section of the song. You know, it seems very rushed and like not well thought out, and they didn't give it any character. I'm like, plus, what is Princess Di's character? Like classy, classy do gooder. Woman who was wronged by a husband, you know, like that. Yeah, and then was go. murdered in a horrible car accident. Because the media was like chasing her and shit. And, like, where's the humor in that character? I don't know why they would have picked her. It made no sense to me. Like, I just thought it was a bad choice. I feel like if you would have given uh, Katya Ginger's part, it would have been a totally different story. Oh my god, because Katya is actually Russian. Yeah, she was a little, she seemed a little zinged by it. It was like, so they give Ginger the... Because that's a funny one. That's the a Russian horse one. talker. Like, that's the one that gives you the most to work with. And it's like, oh, my God. And she, you know, I don't know what Katya knows about Catherine the Great. You can't presume that Katya is a Russian history scholar. Right, but, right. I mean, her character is Russian, so you have to assume that she brings something to the table that's a little extra or different that Ginger Yeah, made. like something even to the look that would be a little But I thought Ginger just pretty much did standard fare. Yeah, because it was a funny... Her part of the song was funny. She didn't have to do much. It was just... Oh, and like, we all know that Ginger can sing and dance. Yeah. Or at least, you know, lip sing and dance. But, but she, she can, can sing, too. She's a singer. Um, she just doesn't have a very wide range, but she's got good vocal control. Right, but that song was awful from the talent show. Oh, yeah, it was terrible. Um, I forgot to mention, you know, like, we haven't seen Raven, Simone, Yams, yeah, Simone, it, the accent isn't over the end, it's over the E, idiot. But nonetheless, um... Adore said that Raven Simone's Simone Ye's comments were like the most offensive and hurtful, and they were edited out of the show. And there's no 
they have never made that footage available of, well, of her full commentary on a door. And Dora said it was like more than Mich- what Michelle said. What? what Raven said was really hurtful and cruel and mean. Like it wasn't helpful, it wasn't constructive, it was just straight up like bullying cruel. I wonder why. And I don't know what it was and Dora didn't specify. So I was like, is that, is that maybe that reason? Because she's supposed to be one of the judges this season. She wasn't in any of these last three episodes. Was she really supposed to be a permanent judge? That's what I was. That's what I read from beforehand. That like the judges panel was these people, and Raven Simone was one of the judges. That was Simone. Like, I, I I know it's stupid, right? Come but on. I don't know. Maybe that's Jen. I I thought Tarner Hall was a new ho- or a new. Well, he's judge. been there the whole time. I know he hasn't that, done much. They said that Raven would be there too. Speaking of which, Raven and Juju be not as funny as they could have been, being the guest people it was, under, it was underwhelming Raven sure. being like soccer mom and glitter I almost did not recognize her it was her. not good GGB is just cute and funny but anyways back to this um, episode 3 um, where it became down to Ginger and Kachi why did they only have a final 2 also I don't know all of a sudden they, they went, went back to final bottom. 3 in the next episode yeah I don't know or low, bottom 3 so there was only a bottom 2 and it was Kachi and Ginger and Alyssa went but to the we just about Alyssa's Annie Oakley, which was his Oh my god, Annie Oakley was by far the best role. Yeah. And it well, was me- and that a Texan given like a southern character. I'm like, so you clearly did it for, Ka- for not for Katya, but you did it for Alyssa. I also thought Alaska's Eve was the second best. Alaska's I was Eve was funny, she but it faded top. from memory for me. It now. was a little like Britney Spears meets Eve. I yeah. thought it was great. It was very cute. But I also thought her part of the song was the funniest. See, everyone else got good lines, and then like, Elizabeth Even Roxy had a good a good role as Eva Perone. Yeah, but like they made Eva Perone funny. I, I really, well, I mean, it's it's also really bad for Kaja. It was literally the worst. It was so sad. And then uh, see how well, how much they gave to everyone else. Yeah. So I need to get up in the Zany Oakley. Zany Oakley gig. It was she so was so on crack because she was like going nuts. Funny. In that whole episode, like, like after they got undressed from the previous episode. She was just a live wire, that woman. Uh, oh but God. the Annie Oakley was that picture I sent you of Alyssa with just her with gun. the gun <laughs> with the like blank stare You're like Alyssa you counted yourself twice <laughs> that's how it was you're looking in the mirror Alyssa's hysterical so I felt like she and what was the song they did that week uh, the, the Taylor Dane Tell It To My Heart, which was the best. Turn Detox didn't do off. anything. I was like, you're just standing Tell there in your only silver only Fifth Element rip-off outfit. And, like, <laughs> fucking Alyssa's, like, doing work. She's, like, doing cartwheels and kickflips. And she also looked like Taylor Dane. Like, it was so good. So and everybody got super into it. Yeah, everyone. Yeah, everyone so, so obviously she was going to win, I think, to me. And, of course, everyone beforehand was like, who are you like, well, we're worried about? Well, was like, I'm worried that she's not going to stick to yeah, her. Yeah, but then Roxy, they're, 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 I'm worried that one of them is not going to stick to our agreement. And then someone's like, which one? And then Roxy's like, well, what's that? Like, everybody <laughs> well, I, like, I like that Roxy was just like, oh, we're, I'm not, I, I, are we trying to keep secrets? Because I don't care. Like, it's it's awesome. we all know what it is. Like, what I felt like Fifi was being a bit shady. Like, oh, yeah. I'm not going to tell Fifi you. Fifi is shady. That's Fifi's way. I know. You know, and we then learned she's this now. The way of Fifi. And so we shady. all knew that, that, that they all thought, I'm like, oh, so that means Alyssa's going to go by. But then how Alyssa went by. It was kind of weird, though, because she was like, talking to both of them and she's like well I really saw the fire in Katya's eyes and I'm like I saw sadness in Katya's eyes but maybe you saw fire too because we didn't see everything but Ginger was the one who was like I want to go out there and lip sync for my life I want to fight da, da, da. I was like, oh, that's what I want to see is that desire and she's like I'm going to go with the person I saw the desire in Katya and I'm like um, you went with like I, I appreciate because you were saying like which queen do I want to see do more work on the show yeah what will they come up with I'd rather see more of Kachi than I would see more of Ginger because I'm not going to get any I feel like that's how she I feel like Alyssa was definitely in our line of thinking of this is it this is all Ginger and when you add up everything each of them has done throughout the whole series so far it's like well Kachi's really been the better one overall up to now so I'm going to go with Katya. And so everybody was like thrown by that. They're all like, it's not fair. You went away. I guess it's like, well, no. Especially when Detox revealed in the next episode that she would have voted for Katya. Yeah, she was like, well, that's who I would have voted for. 
It's like, because I was going off of the judge's critiques. And it's like, 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 oh, Alyssa flipped the script. I'm like, how? She didn't fucking do anything that was dramatic. It, she would have flipped the script if there was like an alliance or something. But there was nothing. She just went with what she thought was the best decision for her. And then in the most foreboding moment, she's like, if I go home, I know it's all because of retaliation or whatever. Like joking. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, so that's a perfect segue into the most current episode. Because Alyssa did go home. Because it, it was a surprising flip because it was exactly what happened to Katya. Up at the top one week, at, and, and Tatiana too. Mm-hmm. Up at the top, down at the bottom. So I guess, I mean, the stakes are even higher than before. So it's like the person who, well, no, in, in the case of Alyssa, it was... So Alyssa so won her lip sync. Right. The other two did not win, and they went home the next Well, Tati, oh, out. no, Tanya didn't win her lip sync. You're right. She didn't win, and then the next up, she went home. Katya didn't win her lip sync. But she was in the top, and then too. immediately in the bottom. But in the, medi- but in the bottom twice. Yeah. I felt like that time, however, because, like, wasn't she in the bottom this week? Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm like, but she wasn't bad in anything. So it was no. like, it just was like, oh, well, you were fourth, so that put you in the bottom three kind of thing. Like, well, this was more of like, like a numbers crunching thing. It was like I like because basically because her transformation because the runway cha- the challenge itself was the filming of those scenes where it was like sequels. Right, but the transformation or the two in one, I have to argue, is never like only one out of everybody gets it actually right. Because even though Alyssa's reveal wasn't really like a, a first look turned into a second look, like Violet Chachki. Yeah, like, because that's the example we're going by, right? And I, I think the only person that really did it right was... I thought Roxy's outfit was the best. I loved her little, like, ju- sassy jumpsuit. And that was the, one of the few that, like, actually transitioned. Like, it looked like something else. It wasn't like, oh, I take... Like, Detox, for example. She just, like, took off a skirt, and now I'm wearing something else. Like, it wasn't... It was like, you have a beach cover-up on. That's not what the challenge yeah, is. Yeah, most of them the were just, like... to be wearable, and then you can... It's a convertible. It converts into something else. I mean, although Alyssa's actual outfit was... Really incredible with the flash. It was really cool. On it. It's, it's probably seemed heavy as fuck. Oh my gosh! I'm like, how are you walking? But well, I'm thing? getting, I'm getting ahead of us. That's the runway. Because um, the challenge was actually a lot of fun this week. I thought, like, um, what were the? They were the like were Thelma Shingles. and Louise. So Thelma and Wheezy. So they were, but they were like zombies. Oh, no, wait, it, it was Velma Thelma and Wheezy. Show squirrels and what had happened to, to baby JJ, and um. Alaska as Betty Davis and what had happened to baby JJ was legitimately amazing. It was hysterical. I, I loved the entrance where she's on a little rascal scooter and then backs up really slow. Oh, yeah, that was a RuPaul moment from, like, two seasons ago. Oh, yeah. But that, it was still, that Walker challenge. He, still hysterical. I felt like from the jump, I knew that Alaska was going to be, or um, Alyssa was going to be overshadowed by Alyssa. Or Alaska. Alaska. Alyssa and Alaska. Well, Alyssa has always Alaska. had problems in acting challenges. She just always has. So, like, I they actually got her out of it, and she gave a really good performance, which was a big improvement from the last time she was in yeah. an acting challenge. But she was whispering a lot, which I thought was bizarre. Yeah, that was really odd. I don't know why she... But she was like, I'm trying to be scary. It's like, okay, but you don't have a microphone right near you like we're making an actual film. So think of it that way. You're not making a real film. Remember that. But I do have to say that Fifi's interpretation of Nomi as a mom in Show Squirrels was actually really fun. Hysterical. It was really good. I begrudgingly loved it. I didn't know that she nailed it. Roxy, Roxy was awful in it. I felt bad for Roxy. Her crown was falling off the whole time. I don't know why she was a brunette, not blonde. I don't know why there wasn't more of like a familial resemblance. And they switched roles. I Maybe know. Asked to switch roles. She's been sabotaging from day four. Like after she got her confidence, so she's like, this she is tried a better to play, role She I'm tried to that. play it straight in the talent show. She got red. She didn't like it, and so she's just been playing the game ever since. She tried to play it every clean. conversation she has. She tried to play it clean, but she's not. Oh, she's been doing this bullshit. Oh, I don't know. I feel like I just couldn't make that decision. Um, I, I was just feel really bad. I just feel like you're not understanding. I'm like, no, 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 no. You did this shit before. We're like, I think we're all sisters, and we should treat each other like family. And you're like, I'm gonna step it, ruin the back. And she had, especially Roxy. Roxy's so dumb and so nice. I know her. Like, I think Roxy kind of planned her sequin moment. Um, but she was like, when she's like Shaw, I was gonna take my something about her Shaw, and they're like, oh, instead of Shaw, Sash. 
Oh, Sash. Sash. It was S A S H, and she wrote it as S H A H. I oh, guess. Yes. Okay. So she kept saying Shaw, and then she's like, oh, this isn't another sequence moment, is it? And they're like, I think it is. And I'm like, I think you planned that when you realized, I don't know, I felt like it was a little premeditated. Well, I, I'll give the girl a bone, because poor thing, she got totally railroaded. Cause that was terrible. <sighs> that was that was a mess. She, she never probably got into that it. As it, it would have been, I think, it, it, yeah, I think you're right. Either way, it would not have been great. I thought that so Valerie Weasley... So if you took the role that would be look better in the long run based out of everyone she would look good in this role being successful at it so that's where she saw her opening and took it um i did like that they snuck in that line like go back to obscurity where you belong oh yeah so party, party city, city. something that runs with party city that still works um i thought I, velma and wheezy was the not, funniest one no i thought it could have been funnier no i liked it i thought it was better than the other two because i didn't really laugh that much at the show scroll other than Fifi because it was like so up and down. Oh yeah, it was, and the it other was an one was for sure. Kind of awkward at times. Like, like some of the things didn't work, but Alaska was really funny throughout. I genuinely feel like the scripts felt a little rushed because oh, yeah. I feel like we've had stronger of these mm-hmm. kinds of sketches. And I guess maybe, maybe it's because I find Detox and Katya to be very funny, and I like them as a pair. I wanted, like, more jokes for them, because I didn't feel like they gave them a lot to do. I kind of thought they did. I mean, it, it, it made them do a lot of the work themselves. I guess so. Um, I which I thought that they did. But they kind of judged Katya for, like, taking a few minutes, and, like, you probably filmed this in, like, 30 minutes. Right. You didn't like, really take, like, you know, you didn't have a four-hour day. You had a 15-minute day. Yeah, so it's, like, they've got to, like, snap into it, like, right away. Like, some people maybe just need to And how long did they have it. to rehearse it, anyway? I don't think that long. They probably got the script, and, like, an hour or two hours later, they probably had to go out there and film. I did, like, the Polaroid picture moment. I thought that was funny. I think That, that was, was great. Oh, my funny. God. Yeah, it was because it was so gross. Their, their zombie makeup, but that also that looked, looked really good. good. Like, they did really good zombie makeup. I thought it was I love so that I was like, I've, I've never felt, felt sexier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I finally got to see, well, actually, the ginger near returned last week on the runway for oh, one of the other performances, but he was in one of the scenes. I was like, oh, he's still here. Hi. Hi, Gingy. Yeah, what well, happened, it was also just too erratic, just like show school. I was like, I guess you're right. Thelma and Wheezy was probably the most consistent because they had the most natural chemistry. And the other two had the standout performances because there was one role that was really the standout role that was clearly like Betty Davis. Basically, basically it was Betty Davis. I mean, I wouldn't expect anything less from Alaska knocking out a Betty Davis impersonation. Like, if she couldn't do that, I don't know what the fuck. Who's in the, the wheelchair, wheelchair now, Blanche? <laughs> Bland. Bland. Yeah. Yeah. But um, nonetheless, Alaska was hilarious. There were great moments, but because there wasn't enough back and forth, it was just kind of like, okay, we have to sit through this to get more of her. her. Okay, okay, good, we're back to Alaska, thank God. And so the two-in-one look, um, Alaska basically brought out a little pound cake. Well, I thought it was hysterical, and I thought that Alaska is the definition of I don't drop character till DVD commentary, because she even told Rue... You're not my mom, and you never will be. But she knew what she was doing, and the funny thing is But that it's I not a two-in-one. She put a bag over her head, then she took it off. That's all she did. Yeah, that was not a two-in-one. They basically gave it to her for how funny it was. Because she was very, she was so consistently funny. And the look was hilarious, because she really painted, like, exactly the face that they put on that little mannequin. Yeah. The interesting thing is that I felt since this first episode that um, Alaska has kind of been earmarked as the winner of this season. I completely agree. Especially after last week when she was Eve and she had the funniest performance I thought and had a good runway look and the like screaming alien with like the 10 foot long nails mm-hmm. or whatever. I When she didn't make the top two I was like that's because she's going to win and I have to like not give it to her every single week and I was like nah it's over. Yeah because it's like and then because right after this episode Alaska's debuted a music video oh, really? of Little pound cake and same makeup right after she won the episode in the ten thousand dollar tip with her little pound cake on the runway. And I'm like, this screams winner to me. Kind of like no, that's solidified it. Because you know, we saw the same thing with Bob. Bob was already doing shit like before the Bob was already cursing it up all over the place. 
And I'm, I'm like, like, okay, we, now we know who's going to Well, 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 well right? luckily the level of talent is so insane, it's hard to predict who's going to be going home week to week, especially since it's so erratic. Yeah, and I'm do. okay with knowing if Alaska has already won. That's fine. I'm just here to watch really good drag and laugh my ass off. It's not really about a winner to me. When you see the tableau of Queens and their final looks on the runway this week, you're like, oh shit. Like, that's like it's tough. another level. It you really got the sense that it's another level because all of these are so amazing in their own way. Um, in a completely different but still all brilliant drag way. I was uh, very, I was like, okay. Okay, I thought even Fifi's two in one was also the other most two in one yeah. look. Even though I hated her wig. Stop trying to do Hollywood glamour. It doesn't, it makes you look shorter for some reason. Like all the focus on her face just emphasizes how tiny she is. Yeah, like her latex outfit was kind of dull. The week, two weeks ago, or whatever, and then she actually did sort of come back is. with the with the future drag look where she was in the, all the blue with the like C three PO metal pieces. It was like a like a human machine. C-3PO. Yeah, it was a human machine hybrid look. It was really it was amazing. Really cool. She did a good job. And then she chose she showed her cosplay, her. her cosplay queen side. Finally, she showed it, and so then I was like, oh, you went back to this. Like, the, the, luckily, the actual her, outfit was cool. Luckily, her lip sync is not that great, so... We knew that Alaska was going to win. Alaska actually... Okay, Alaska, Alaska won these, while in character. Like, her weird speeches and just like, oh my god, can you stop? Like, that whole, like, debate speech she gave the first time she won, she had to send someone home, she sent on top of and she, like, gave this whole, like, long Even before disclaimer. she gives them the... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh with, like, the, with the Alyssa stuff? I base this on... The judges Can you blame her? She's just and she's I just dating for screen time, Samir. Don't hate on this her. And that, I'm, I'm like, okay, we don't need the speech. We just want. She's just decision. trying to get her screen time in. She's just trying to be way too. And they're serious. giving it to her, so. Like, but it wasn't entertaining. It was just no, like, I know, but stupid. She's, but she knows that all everyone is gonna listen to her, and the more time that she. Gets, I fast forwarded through it until she brought up the lipstick. Well, I, I went out. We all kind of knew how it was gonna go down. We did, yeah. Um, but I was like, okay, enough with the speeches. Just get to the point. Get to the point. Um, and this time it really kind of like seems to hurt her to send Alyssa home, quote unquote, send Alyssa home. Because this time, at the end of the episode, instead of showing us everyone's return to the workroom at the beginning of the next episode, they roll into the end of this one. And of course, shady ass Fifi just starts talking shit about Alyssa Fuck right away. Alyssa. <laughs> and then. Lo and behold, from behind the mirror, oh, that was such a great effect. I love yeah. it when they lit up the two-way mirror with all the queens posed. Like, they look angry. They look really angry. I, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure Alyssa heard everything. I was like, like oh, I cannot, cannot wait to hear what Alyssa she has to say. was saying about her. And if you can't handle the heat, because in a previous episode, she was talking about how everybody came for her online and how it was so hurtful. And Detox was like, yeah, I mean, I'd feel bad that I make her well, scared of well, make her scared of West Hollywood, but... You know, she, she was, was a bitch. But it was like, no, I think she, she didn't have the butt. She just said that she was, she said the butt before, but she just said that she felt bad that she was afraid to come to West Hollywood because someone threatened to throw acid in her face. But, but she's like, okay, say I got that. it. No, 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 no. Um, uh, Fifi was saying that. Like, no, I know, but Tito doesn't say that about her, is what I'm saying. Yeah, no, 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 no. She was just saying, like, I feel kind of guilty for contributing to the swell of hate. Yeah, pretty much. Because um, Detox is. Also, a good person, I think. Who's no, I think so. And I think that he's competition minded. Her friend. But yeah, and so it was um, interesting that Fifi's not really succeeded in her redemption goals. Well, I think that if you talk about it so much, then you don't really have any genuine That's why it felt so. I'm like, is this like an unedited? Because usually I think that would be edited down for us, but we wouldn't get this that feeling. That it's I mean, she just went on and on about how Alyssa had this coming and that she couldn't wait to eliminate her. I mean, it might be putting some words in her mouth, but the gist was that she was happy. To, she would be giddy at eliminating Alyssa after what she did. Yeah. Like, how she, she didn't do anything. I don't see what the problem is. Because the reason she was so nervous, as we find out, because she was thinking, well, you know, if Alyssa can do that based on that, she's going, if she gets to choose again, she's going to be like, oh, well, I'm going to add up how well everyone's done throughout the competition. So if I'm one of the choices in the bottom... Like, the adding up of how I've done in the competition is going to come lower than everyone else. Well, and I'll be sent home. And it's like, so she got really defensive about it <coughs> and lashed out because that's what she does when she gets defensive. Yeah. Um, and it's just a character trait that she has not been able to 
really well, she thought, control. Well, she thought it was under control, but clearly, under really these circumstances, not. they don't bring out the best. So time. I think they showed that clip on, like, you know, normally they would have cut that down to one or two lines and we would have moved on if it was in the beginning of the episode. We got episode. full read. But they wanted to set it up, so I'm like, I don't think it was entirely plotted. To be like, we need to just talk and talk and talk about how much you're pissed off at Alyssa and how you would have said, like, just do it. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't entirely feel like it was just producer manipulation. Oh, no, I don't believe for a minute that she's such a victim to the producers at all. I don't believe her. No, that was all her. That's just how she feels. You can't blame adrenaline or whatever else was going on while you were filming for the reasons that you say shitty things. I, I did, did love that tableau behind the mirror. That was such a perfect well, segue. Well, what do you think is going to happen now? So now we, you well, know, we're down to five. So now we're down to five and five. Five eliminated queens that I'm assuming you're vying for one spot to come back. I think there's only four eliminated queens, isn't there? It's Tatiana, Coco, Alyssa. And Ginger. Gin- oh, I guess so. Because it would be five if Adora was going to come right, back. Right, right. And then there are only the five other queens left. So... Uh, all, the, all we got from the clip of the next week was that RuPaul announced that they're coming back for their revenge. And that there's going to be a lip sync for the two people that get a ch- I don't know if it's for two people, for all of them. There's going to be a lip sync for the winner of lip sync next week amongst the eliminated queens. That's going to be the final determining factor on who gets back into the show. But, but they do, don't tell us what the revenge pick? is. Yeah, but do, <coughs> do the people who lip sync for their legacy, do they pick who comes back? I don't know. Or if the judges pick them, I'm not sure. They didn't really say. They just kind of gave you enough to whet your appetite and come back. I'm like, we were going to anyways. Yeah, so why not just give us a little bit more info, please? We're going to parse it out the rest of the week until next Thursday. <laughs> Probably. Sounds Bitches. Right. Bitches. But oh, wow, we sped through all of those. We did. That was a, I'm proud that was a of speed us. read. No, nah, I thought that I think we had just the right amount of reading. <laughs> we just get a lot done in an hour when it comes to reads. Accurate. Yeah, well, uh, I wonder, n- no more questioning when they're going to come back because it's happening now. So now we just have to guess who we think has the best chances of making it back in. I think it's Alyssa. I would think so too because if it's going to come down to a lip sync of those people, I'm like, Alyssa. Yeah. Hands down. It's going to be Alyssa and Coco. It'll be a, that's the thing. It'll be, it'll be another. Showdown of Alyssa and Coco in a lip sync oh, moment and to I, save the I was show. much obsessed with the, the moment where we find out, you know, who snatched Alyssa's wig, and it turned out to be Roxy as a joke. Because she put on Roxy's wig. Yeah, and she was just being loud and annoying, and Roxy wanted it back. So, Robert, please. <laughs> but uh, definitely not the drama that I thought it was going to lead to, so it's fine, but... It might be a Coco versus Alyssa. I don't know. Coco's showing was just so underwhelming. I don't consider her a threat. That horrible soft shoe. But she's a threat in a lip sync, though. Okay. She didn't get a chance to lip sync because only the winners of the episode lip sync. So we didn't see her do it. But she's always been a fierce lip sync performer. So that's going to be a challenge for whoever goes against her. But I, have, I don't know. It's possible. But I can't imagine them bringing back Coco in favor of Alyssa. I can't see it. If it came to a choice between the two of them. If it comes right down to it, I think, you know, the strongest would definitely be Alyssa, then Tatiana, then Ginger, and Coco last. Yeah. Kind of like almost the order in which they went home. Except you swapped Ginger and... Yeah. Reverse order, sort of. Ginger and Tatiana are swapped. Yeah. Well, I think we definitely true. already know that Alaska is probably going to win. But who do you think is going to make it in the top two? The top two are going to do a top three. Top, well, the other two in the top, I guess, is the better way to word that. Um, let's see. If Alyssa comes back, I feel like there's a chance there. Yeah, because after the Annie Oakley bit, I definitely thought that she was a shoe in for a top three. Like, she's kind of been very consistent, even if, like, in Well, she even says that in her, when she was trying to save her eye with Alaska. She was like, I've been very consistent. I was in the top last week, blah, 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 blah so... So, so I, I feel, feel like that's a chance. Because I don't know, I feel like Roxy's kind of not really that interesting. No. She hasn't had much of a storyline. So it just seems unlikely that they would put her in there. We've seen a lot of Katya, so there's a possibility of Katya can get out of her head. That's a big if. Because um, I can't really see the other people. Because it seems like this season has been set up the way the first All-Stars was, which was like, Every, all the people who thought Chad Michaels should win, here's a show for Chad Michaels to win. 
All the people that thought Alaska should have won season five, here's a show for Alaska to still be a winner of a drag race season. That's true. It's kind of how it feels. Um, so then she'd be like, oh, I won an all-star season. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, you're competing against people that we all knew were going to lose, so. <laughs> Jeez. Well, that would be a surprise, surprise if Alaska doesn't, doesn't win. If somebody else like sneaks up and suddenly like, their arc picks up right at the end. Hopefully that's Katya. I would hope so too. Let's see if she. I don't know. I feel. I really do feel like this is the season where anything could happen. I mean, the level of talent is just sort of through the roof, and it's been consistently entertaining and hysterical. And since they lost, like, because I feel like the first two episodes were like an hour ten, an hour fifteen. Since they tightened it back up to an hour, I feel like it moves so quickly, and it's just like laugh after laugh, and there's not a lot of sitting around the fucking workroom and watching them put on makeup and not talk about anything. Yeah, we're going to... I think I cannot wait for next week's episode. We're going to have so neither. much to say. Yes, and so thank God we got all of this housekeeping out of the way. I know, we did that in record time. Yes, we did. Yay! Oh my goodness, so of course if you want to continue to hear our future broadcasts, <laughs> podcasts, <laughs> I like still saying broadcasts. I know it doesn't work anymore, but it's just I wish I was on old-timey radio. But, but nonetheless, you're on you the, the old timey internet. That's true. It's been around for a while. But, but you can, of course, find us on iTunes. You can subscribe, rate, and review us there. You can, of course, find us on the Gamba Digital YouTube page. Um, and that's also free for now. No, just kidding. It's, no, it's, 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 it's free. free. It's free. Um, you can uh, subscribe to us there, of course. Um, you can, of course, find us in our random musings on everything. Including Drag Race on Twitter. I'm at Samir Raculous. I'm at Marge, she wrote, and Gambit Magazine is at Gambit Digital. Yeah, we're everywhere. Everywhere, because the internet is everywhere. <laughs> yeah, we're in the air, in the clouds. The ether, if you will. Yeah. Ooh, that sounds good. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I'm not. What does not fear and loathing in Las Vegas? Yeah, please, I don't want to do this. <laughs> we're not going to do this, don't you worry. <laughs> Goodness. I don't write for a Rolling Stone. <laughs> But anyways, until next week's episode of The Shady Ladies, we bid you a dear... Bye! Bye.